Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am doing a book review for A Master of Jen by P. Jelly Clark. This is one of my new releases review and it came out in May 2020. And honestly, it is one of the books that I was most excited to come out this year. This book follows Fatma, who is an agent with the Supernatural Bureau, it has a much longer name <laughs> that I don't remember off the top of my head, but she's an agent with the Supernatural Bureau and it's her job to go out and investigate anything of a supernatural nature. Now the premise of this is a historical alternate history. Jen have come back into the world and that has sped up some technology issues as well. So it's more of a steampunk magical Cairo. So how I would like to do this review today is I would like to do a spoiler free section at the beginning and then I would like to do a more spoilery section at the end because I have thoughts. <laughs> Even though this is the first novel in this world, there are two novellas previous and I do suggest you read those before reading this novel just because it's going to add to the beautifulness of this world and you have some characters that are in both novellas and so it makes more sense how they interact with the characters in the novel if you have that background. You can still read the novel and you'll be fine. You'll just have that sense that you're missing out on some character relationship. Now my favorite thing about this world is the atmosphere, is the city. Clark writes it in such a way that I want to go visit Cairo now just to see how much of that city or how much of the modern day Cairo is present in his book. I know that he's a historian as his day job and you can tell that in the richness of the environment that we are given. I like that he is able to convey distance in Cairo as he talks about we're going to go to this neighborhood, we're going to go to this neighborhood. You get that sense that you are in a city and it's going to take a little bit of time to get from one place to another which is something that a lot of fantasy worlds and a lot of historical fiction misses but Clark does it so beautifully and Cairo in itself is really, it's more than just the setting of the story. It is a character in itself. It has more of a pull to the story than just we live here and this is where the events are happening. Now Fatma, as well as being an agent, is also one of the first female agents of the Bureau and has worked very hard to be seen and respected for her work. In this novel, she is given a partner and that is another woman who really wanted to work with her. The relationship between Fatma and Hadia is a lot of fun because you get to see Fatma going or doing the characteristic hero mentality of no I I'm fine doing this by myself but at the same time getting to embrace the heroine's journey of it's okay to do this with other people and I like that the miscommunication that happens between Fatma and Hadia is really driven by Fatma not asking questions, not taking the time to get to know Hadia. And Hadia is like, nope, this is it, we're partners. And by the end of the book she goes, I hope we are friends as well as partners. They just have a great relationship. And it's realistic to how investigation work is going to, or how investigation work is done. You get to see how they both have networked and how they have their own information sources but then how they can tie that in with one another to share the information when we need it in the book. And it's done in a way that is organic rather than, well, we need to know this information, so this is convenient. You know, Clark doesn't do convenient, he does methodical. So this book starts off with a group of Englishmen and the Brotherhood of al Jahiz, a secret society that is going around and collecting relics or souvenirs that are supposedly from Al Jahiz, and then they are murdered. So Al Jahiz is the person who opened or who created a rift in the multiverse, which allowed Jen back into the world. And he's gone now. Some say he's dead, and others say that he's really, really old, but he's still alive. So having this brotherhood murdered in the way that they are is what brings Fatma to the investigation. In the course of her investigation, a man comes forward saying that he is Al Jahiz and he is returned. And what he does is he stirs up the population by pointing out the gap and equalities between the 
socioeconomic classes and the differences between people who have magic and don't have magic, and it causes turmoil in the city of Cairo. Fatma and Hadia are very certain that this is an imposter, that this is not the real al Jahiz, and so they go about investigating. There are a couple plot twists in this book. One I felt was heavy-handed, but the other ones I really enjoyed. So I think Going from that, I am going to move into the spoilery section. Welcome to the spoilery section. Picking up where I left off with the plot twists, I found it was interesting that City was a half gen. Not only does she have the help of her goddess, but she also has her own blood to help her as she is a very competent fighter. I enjoyed the relationship between City and Fatma and how it's a continuation. So we're not getting to see them like each other. We already know that they like each other. We're just getting to see them navigate how this relationship is going to work. And it was very real. It was very messy. It was very lifelike. And I enjoyed that a whole lot. So my biggest letdown with this book is a trope that I see done a lot. And it's mostly done in historical settings or in male-dominated society fantasies where You'll have a woman who is clawed to the top, she's investigating, she's prominent, and then she dismisses other women. And I don't like this trope. The idea that women who have fought for what recognition and prestige they can get are automatically going to just dismiss other women, especially in an investigation sense, does not make any sense to me at all. We see that dismissal with Hadia where Fatma at first is like, oh, I don't want a rookie. I, you know, you're just going to get in the way. And she made up the rule to keep Hadia out of the first arrest for Al Jahiz. And then Hadia shows up because Ansi told her, yeah, that rule doesn't exist. That confrontation was good. And I think it was necessary. But at the same time, I don't think either character fully embraced that. It was only kept between them. And so thus when the villain is revealed to be Abby Worthington, even though like the clues were lining up and I had figured out who the villain was. For me, it was like a train wreck watching them not get it, not get it, not get it. And then all of a sudden, oh, I think we might have missed something. You think? I think it would have been better to have had the conversation between Fatma and Hadia earlier in the book where when they're trying to figure out the initials for A.W., and they go, well, who is everyone who has the initials of A.W.? Instead of immediately latching on to Alexander Worthington, they also considered Abby Worthington, since they both have the same initials. And where they had the discussion of why it can't be her. Like, oh, she doesn't speak the language very well. And she is, she doesn't understand the culture. She's continuously, you know, saying, oh, this is what I learned about this. And... Fatma and Hadia are like, yeah, that's not a thing. Having Fatma and Hadia talk about that evidence as that's why it can't be her, compared with what the imposter Al Jahiz is doing, it would have made it a lot better for them then to come around and be like, realize, oh, we screwed up. It really was Abby. Instead, they just completely dismissed her because she seemed weak and infantile. And again, it goes back to the trope that I hate. You have women dismissing women, and I don't buy it. And that's really what dropped this story down for me. So I really did find interesting the concept of the seal of Suleiman and how a magic has been worked so humans just don't see it in the text or in the stories. And so it's like it's fallen away from the memory unless they're very strong-willed and they figure it out. And I like that that information was put with it can control Jen. And then we got the plot twist of City is half Jen. That made things very interesting to me. I'm still extremely suspicious about the angels. I mean, you have the clock of the world come out twice, and both times angels are behind it. So I think that's a story for the future of what these angels are actually trying to do, trying to accomplish, that Fatma and Hadi are just going to have to investigate again. Yeah, I guess I'm calling it Clark, you have to write another novel because you have left some glaring plot hole that I need answered. I did really enjoy this book, even though it didn't live up to all of my hopes and expectations, it still was a very good, solid novel. And I gave it four stars, 
four and a half if you rate half scale. And I look forward to reading more by Clark. And hopefully we get that other book so I get that other answer. If you have read this book and want to talk more about it, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Thank you and have a good day.